This Cisco ACI multi-site use case shows a tenant and VRF are stretched between sites. The EPGs in the VRF along with their bridge domains and subnets, as well as their provider and consumer contracts, are stretched between sites. As you can see in the diagram, Layer 2 broadcast flooding is enabled across sites leveraging the head-end replication or HER capabilities of the spine nodes that replicate and send the frames to each remote fabric where the Layer 2 bridge domain has been stretched. In multi-site, create a tenant. Associate two sites with this tenant and as an option, associate a security domain to each site. Security domains are created using the APIC GUI and can be assigned to various APIC policies and user accounts to control their access. Associate the tenant to all the users. They now have access to the tenant. Next, create a schema. Enter a name for the new schema. Rename the template if necessary. Choose the tenant you created from the drop-down list. Add an application profile. Create two EPGs within this ANP. As shown in this use case diagram, stretch the tenant, VRF, bridge domains, and EPGs to both sites. Next, associate the bridge domains to the EPGs. Click the first EPG and create a bridge domain. In the work pane, click the bridge domain and you see it is connected to the EPG. Repeat these steps for the second EPG. Next, associate the VRF to the BDs. Click in the VRF section to create a VRF. Enter the name of the VRF. Click the first BD and associate it to the VRF. Click the second BD and associate it to the same VRF. By clicking on the VRF, you can see that it is now associated to both BDs. Next, create a contract. Change the scope of the contract to tenant, since the tenant is stretched. The web EPG is consuming the contract and the app EPG is providing the contract. Click the app EPG and add a contract. Choose the contract you created, change the type to provider, and click Save Changes. Click the Web EPG and add the same contract, change the type to Consumer, and click Save Changes. Click the contract and you can see that App EPG is provided with that contract and Web EPG is consumed with that contract. Next, add a subnet. Click the first BD and then add subnet. Enter the gateway IP address and description, then click OK. Repeat these steps for the second BD. Stretch the entire tenant to both sites. Click the Sites section, then choose two sites to be associated using the default template. Click Confirm. Here you can see, changes will be pushed to both sites. Save the schema. The template is pushed to both sites so that the entire bridge domain with Layer 2 extension can be stretched. Enable the L2 stretch flooding on the BD. Click the first BD and in the right column, confirm that the L2 is stretched. Repeat these steps for the second BD. Next, deploy to both sites. 
verify the configuration and click OK. Click each EPG to view their health status. This Cisco ACI multi-site use case is similar to the previous one where a tenant, VRF, and their EPGs with their bridge domains and subnets are stretched between sites. However, in this use case, Layer 2 broadcast flooding is localized at each site. Layer 2 broadcast, multicast, and unicast traffic is not forwarded across fabrics over replicated VXLAN tunnels. In multi-site, Edit the previously created schema. Change the schema name. The difference between this schema and the previously created schema is no layer 2 flooding or broadcast extension is allowed. Click the first BD. Make sure the L2 stretch checkbox is checked and the inner site bum traffic allow checkbox is unchecked. Repeat these steps for the second BD. Save the schema. You see a delta with the two sites and that the BDs show modified policy. Push the template to both sites by clicking deploy to sites. The BDs no longer have broadcast extensions or layer 2 flooding. Click OK and you can see that the sites were successfully deployed. For more information on Cisco ACI Multisite, go to CiscoAPIC Docs.